Alright guys, I'm just making this video because while it's on my mind, I might as well make this video. So, I also got scammed. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But, yeah, the scammer did something completely stupid, which obviously made me think it was a scam. So, I'm just going to make this video basically what happened, how I almost got scammed, and what you can do to, like, you know, prevent it being scammed. So, yeah, basically, I'd never use Facebook Marketplace because 90% of the time, they're trying to scam you. But yeah, at the end of the day, like if you want to try and like sell stuff, you want to like broaden like your 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 places anyway. So like if you want to sell on eBay, Instagram, like always try and like use all these social platforms, obviously, but just got to know that on Facebook, people are going to try to scam you anyway. So and I, I, I personally know that anyway, because I have a bunch of scams, but this one was like almost too good to be true. But then they like, fucked up right at the end, which is like their own fault. I mean, I, I could have easily got scammed but it seemed very genuine until the very end which i'm gonna show you right now so i'll probably do like a a bunch of screenshots and stuff but i'll go away from the beginning so basically this person i don't know if i can pop this out i'm trying to sell my bread reimagines so i've got a bunch of stock on sale so i've got like multiple different sizes on this one listing and so the first it's from, it's like a lady she's called amber i don't know if it's an actual person or their account's been taken and obviously the scammers are trying to use their accounts but then i'll, I'll get to it basically so the first message was have you sold this already and so my reply was hi there which size question mark she replies i think it was the next day actually and it was a, it was it was like an hour later this was on saturday a uh, 10 and a half because i had a, t a uk 10 and a 10 and a half a uk 8 and a 12 i sold the 12 already through ebay so i had to take that, take that down but she obviously when she stayed when when they stayed like have you sold this already it already seemed a bit strange like like if you're gonna be more specific like have you sold x size have you sold this already like i don't know maybe maybe that's one thing for the scammer to know maybe we just mention which size if there's multiple sizes available i don't know i'm not trying to I'm not trying to help the scammers <laughs> but yeah uh, she replies with a question about because i just didn't, didn't see the um the message i don't really use facebook a lot i never assumed that i'm gonna get a bunch of like messages on facebook but sometimes i'll look on it on day to day basis which i normally do anyway so yeah, she replied with a question mark which then made me feel like it was more genuine because it was a question mark it wasn't like they didn't reply but they actually genuinely wanted to like get a response back so that's the reason why i thought oh sorry um this actually might be a legit person actually wanted to buy something so yeah i replied back yes sorry yes i still have the size and then their, their reply was, do you ship to Ireland? And normally for me, I normally only ship directly in the UK. I don't really like the whole bullshit of trying to sell outside of the UK, which mainly because I got scammed in the past and it's the only reason why I don't sell outside of the UK anymore. Long story short, I bought a pair of, I think it was like Virgil Abloh's John 2s. I sold them for like, through global shipping for like 400 quid. And then the guy just basically scammed me. So yeah, never use global shipping for ship for sneakers. And for eBay, as a little advice, if you're going to do use the global shipping, have it be sent to eBay's authenticity and then they can sort it out through global shipping in the future. Obviously, you've got like some backup. If they're going to sell it worldwide, use authenticity for sneakers regardless. If it's in, in England, in the UK, do it well wide. It just it just makes a lot of sense. I just don't know why they don't do that. But anyway, yeah, they said, do you ship to Ireland? I said, yeah, I can ship anywhere, basically. I just rather, like, you know, broaden my range instead of it being in the United Kingdom, which I normally do prefer. But, you know, some people, obviously, are not all from the UK. So, you know, you got to basically, well, I basically tell them, it, well, they'll have to pay shipping, basically. So I just said it'll be £15 extra for it to be shipped to Ireland, tracked and signed. And they replied, what courier would you be using? And would you be able to list the value of the parcel very low, like 20 and as a gift when you're at the post office so that I don't have to pay much on custom charges? Now, the, that message kind of seems genuine because a lot of people do ask that question. Make sure that the custom charges, they're not going to get affected by a bunch of custom charges. And yeah, I've personally done that in the past, like for like when I'm buying stuff from like Japan or something. Like I'll always specifically ask if they can drop the custom rates down. Not only so I don't get hit by customs because customs is a lot of money. But when 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 you're the person that's the, when you're the seller, like it's a risk on you in case it gets lost. Obviously, if it if it's lost in transit, then well, you're you're out of it. You're out of a shoe. You're basically out of the full value because you're not actually interested in the full value. If you set the value to like twenty quid, just so that they don't have to pay shipping you know, our customs, should I say? But yeah, but it, it's very it's very it's very common that a message is brought out because I know people don't like to pay. Um, custom charges obviously and that's and like another reason why i thought this was more of a legit buyer because they're asking these questions it doesn't seem specifically like a scammer but yeah and i then replied it will be via royal mail and that i can 
and that I can be possible. I don't know why, why my English is terrible. But what did I say? It will be via the Royal Mail and that I I was supposed to say it can be possible, not I can be possible. That seems strange. Anyway, then they replied, thanks. How much do you want for the shoes plus shipping? I replied 265. So it was basically 250 plus the 15 shipping. They said, do you take PayPal? I said, yes, it will be PayPal G and S. Quote, if you don't know what GNS means, it's um, goods and services. It protects you as a seller. And then the reply, what's your PayPal email? I can pay now. And normally I should never give my own PayPal email. Regardless, I should always ask for their PayPal. Now that is a question that I'll be doing now from now on. If, um, if someone asks for my PayPal, I'm going to be like, no, I want your PayPal so that I can invoice you so that you get it official through PayPal. And then you guys can pay me just so that I have the um, the control over the the transaction. Obviously, it'll be through goods and services anyway, so I'll just set it all up as like an invoice. And if I'm setting up as a business, I have to do the invoices anyway. So I should always ask for their PayPal email. But that's something that I'm going to do in the future. But yeah, I sent them my email. I also said make sure that the address is the correct on your PayPal. Obviously, that's pretty standard. Make sure it's the correct address because regardless if it's the wrong address, I am not sending it off to another address, you know, because they can just say it didn't arrive and I'll get scammed. You know, that's a, that's a very basic scam. Always make sure that it's, it's their correct PayPal, regardless of them saying, oh, can you ship it to next door neighbor? No, ship it to their address. Like they sent me a heart emoji, which is kind of crazy. And then they said, just pay it. Uh, should get it in your app or email any minute now. I sent them back with a the thumbs up and I was like, okay. Then I checked my phone, right? I checked my phone and this is the email that I got. It's disappeared already. All right, here we go. From PayPal services. All right. I've never had this email before in my life. This is the way they've messed up in my opinion, because I'm not that stupid. It, it looks legit, honestly. It, it looks like a legit email, but it's not. Um, even the email looks pretty, pretty decent. There's no like missing letters or anything. It just says the payment from their name is on temporary hold. We have placed the payment on hold due to us needing more information about this transaction. The payment will not appear in your pending balance, but will be available after verification is fulfilled. Now I've never heard of PayPal saying that it will not be shown in your balance or there will be no status of the transaction. <laughs> like when I read that twice, I was like, that is not a PayPal email. I checked my PayPal's. There is no, in there is no money that's been in my PayPal. I'm like, 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 look at this. It looks so legit. Like, oh, I wish it looks so legit. Like, like from the email itself all the way to like the bottom, it looks like a straight up legit email. And they even have like the transaction ID. I even checked the transaction ID. There's no transaction ID possible because I checked my own transaction ID on my own PayPal and there's nothing there. And another thing, they made a mistake. I'm checking the transaction fee. It's zero. So basically it wasn't even through goods and services. When I mentioned to him that it should have been through goods and services. So yeah, I, that's when I instantly knew, yeah, this is not a, an actual email. And obviously when I checked my PayPal, it wasn't in there. And I'm like, yeah, they're trying to scam me. So I then replied, haven't received it. Good scam, bye, basically. So they actually have not replied. And I did check their actual pep, their, um, what do I call it? Their, um, their profile on their Facebook. And their last post was from July, 2023. And I'll be honest with you, this kind of looks like a legit page. Like it seems legit, but I, I genuinely believe that this has been hacked and it's like a lot of PayPal accounts mainly do get hacked and they've been used for like scammers basically. So it's unfortunate for the person that's being used to get, to try and scam people. But yeah, the biggest and simple tip that I can give any, any seller or any buyer, check your goddamn PayPal's. Because if, if the money's not in there, you know there's gonna be a problem. So yeah, that's about it for this video. I'll catch you guys in another video. Hopefully I don't get scammed again, but I'm sure I'm gonna get scammed in the future. Just expect to get scammed, but yeah. But this information you'll probably learn and you'll learn how to not get scammed. But yeah, I'm not getting scammed. I'll never get myself scammed ever again ever since the goddamn Virgil Abloh shit. I might make a video on that actually. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's it. See you guys later. Bye bye.